Long time back, I made a video on best and the worst placements of Saturn and many of you requested what about Rahu? Why not Rahu also? So here it is, best and the worst placements of Rahu. But before I go forward, very big disclaimer. These combinations should not be seen in isolation for the sake of the heavens. <laughs> Please analyze the overall chart and then you analyze this. So first you see this, then you see the chart and then you see this again. Only then it will make sense because you will find so many people with these good combinations which will do very bad in life because the overall chart is not in a harmonious direction and you will find a lot of people with the bad combinations, quote unquote good bad. And you will see they are doing very good in their life. Okay, so therefore please understand that everything has to be seen with the chart don't forget the other eight players all right so here it is and the first one of course you guessed it right one of the best placements for rahu is the 10th house because rahu's primary objective is to eclipse the sun and which house does the sun get rejection and strength well of course it is the 10th house right so rahu in 10th is exceptionally great for name, fame, power, position, authority to think that you are the king when you are actually not. <laughs> because God is the only king there and nobody else, right? But Rahu in 10th can give you this illusion that you are the boss and everybody depends on you when they actually don't. But it's good for traits of Rahu, okay? And then the second placement is, of course, the second from the 10th, which is the house of 11, maybe this is even a better position of Rahu because 11th house is the house of fulfillment of desire and Rahu just wants to fulfill all desires, right? Rahu wants to keep eating. So Rahu keeps eating, eating, eating in the 11th house, which means he gets a desire fulfilled then moves on to next, 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 next and next, all right? So that's how Rahu behaves. <coughs> then the third position is the third house. <laughs> the third house, as you know, is uh, uh, third house is Maituna Bhava basically, right? It's Gemini, it's the original sign of prostitution. So therefore, if Rahu is in the third, you might behave like a prostitute. Not in terms of sexuality only, but it can be ter in terms of life in general. For example, okay, you, you start a career in finance and after two years, oh, IT is charming you, all right? <laughs> so you are charmed by IT. So you move to IT. After two years, ooh, astrology, ooh, now astrology has started seducing me and I need to move towards astrology. And then after two years, oh, sport. So you jump like uh, cats and dogs and, you know, monkeys uh, from one place to other. Now, is this good for Rahu? Is this bad? Well, it will depend. But in case the chart is supportive, then this can make you uh, very experienced with different things in life, okay? But be careful, this may not be the best placement for personal life, okay? Now, when I say third house, 10th house, 11th house, this placement should only be seen from the Bhava chart, not the Lagna chart. Bhava Chalit chart, if you don't know what Bhava Chalit chart is, please type exotic astrology, B-H-A-V-A chart, Bhava chart, you will find the video. Please watch that, all right? Otherwise, I know you will see the Lagna chart and then you will start writing comments. All right, number four, Rahu does excellent in art science and also air science because the art science give you wealth and air science give you pleasure, right? So now again, this may not be the best for your spiritual growth and upbringing, but for Rahu and materialistic pleasures, this is excellent, okay? So this can again make you very versatile. It can give you wealth from many different directions, you know, so Taurus, so Virgo, Capricorn, so if Rahu is in these signs, or Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, right? Then it can be very good, provided Rahu is also well placed. So, for example, if you are, uh, if your Rahu is in Libra, but it is in the tenth or eleventh, okay, then it's even better. So it's like best of both the worlds, sign and house, all right? <clears throat> now, another thing which is very good for Rahu is Rahu-Mercury conjunction. This is excellent. Rahu-Mercury if together or Rahu aspects Mercury or you know like Mercury-Rahu are one, seven to each other. So Mercury-Ketu is conjunct and they are aspecting each other. Then also it's excellent. But 
with this there is a catch uh, in your date of birth in your numerology you should have mars mercury together which means you should have the number 9 or 5 9 and 5 okay so maybe you are born on 5th of september or 9th may or you know 1995 1959 or your or you have 5 in your date of birth and your destiny number is 9 or either way okay so your basic number can also be 9 or 5 and the other one is there so if you have 9 and 5 in your numerology and in astrology you have rahu mercury brilliant this makes you like this is an amazing thing to have okay you will be able to pick up opportunities for finances like this okay but again for personal life uh, may not be the best okay you, you might cheat other people you might be a thug or a crook or a criminal also with this but for rahu traits it's very good <laughs> Now, worst placements of Rahu, one of the worst placements is Rahu placed in trines. Now, again, this is with disclaimer. When I say Rahu is bad in trines, it does not mean it is bad for your overall life. Rahu in trines may be bad for, it's very tricky, it can be bad for your material life and your spiritual life also. I'll explain how. So, suppose your overall chart is very strong and Rahu is in trines, so then you may be a bit eccentric because the trines, if Rahu is in trines, it will aspect the other trines. Then it's great. But if your overall chart is bad and your Rahu is in trines, then it will it will make you a thug, cheat, cheat uh, crook like this. You will always want to you know deceive others and get money because you, you have very low morals, okay? So then it's a terrible placement because Rahu in trines can either make you eccentric or make you characterless, okay? So, uh, this is very bad, okay, unless the overall chart is very strong, okay. Number two is Rahu in the 8th or the 12th. Very, very, very bad for addictions, illusions, okay. This is maybe the most of all difficult placement. So, if you have Rahu in the 8th or 12th or aspected by the 8th Lord, 12th Lord or conjunct the 8th Lord or the 12th Lord, oh boy, this is a difficult placement, all right, Unless the chart is like super strong, this is difficult for 99% of the people, okay? They are addicted to addictions. <laughs> they are in illusion. They are hallucinated. They are in delusion, okay? So, illusion, delusion, hallucination. So, three levels are there. Very, very, very difficult placement. So, please, if Rahu is in the 8th, please chant Om Namo Narayanaya every day 108 times. Please chant and if you have Rahu in 12th, chant Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Vamanaya. So, these two mantras are very, very, very important. Don't miss this. Okay, don't take it lightly. And stay away from addictions, but easier said than done. Number 3, Rahu conjunct either sun or moon. Or sometimes worst case, both. <laughs> okay. So, worst case is like Rahu, Sun, Moon are together. Oh my God, that's like a, that's one hell of a combination. But nonetheless, if Rahu, Moon or Rahu, Sun is also, then also this is a very difficult placement because if the chart is not good, it can make you very confused most of the times. And if the chart is good, it can make you very eccentric and you may be very smart. Okay, but in general, if, there are other bad things, you know, your Lagnesh is badly placed, your 8th Lord is in Kendra, 12th Lord is in Kendra, 6th Lord is also involved. Mostly this is a troublesome combination, okay? And this is a person who should always seek guidance from a Guru. Otherwise, this person might remain confused throughout his life, okay? Number 4, Rahu-Saturn connection. So, Rahu-Saturn aspecting each other or sitting together, very difficult. Or... If Rahu and Saturn are not together, but they are aspecting one house together, okay? So, suppose the fifth house from Rahu is receiving Rahu's aspect and Saturn is also aspecting that house, you know, from some other house. Then this is called as Shrapi Dio. So, the Shrapi Dio is officially if Rahu and Saturn are together, but imagine they are not together, but even if they both of them are aspecting one house, then also the Shrapi Dio is applicable to a large extent in that house, you know? It shows, you know, uh, like curses from previous lifetimes and all this, okay? Because Saturn represents the feeling of being dejected. You know, imagine when you are insulted or you are ignored, you are humiliated. How do you feel? Okay, very bad, right? And Rahu represents the person who has just got a shock, who has been cheated, okay? So imagine 
you have been cheated and rejected at the same time. So if Saturn Rahu is, you know, conjunct in the seventh or aspected by the seventh, you know, with your marriage, these things could happen. Okay, so this is certainly a difficult placement. And the last and one of the most difficult placements is Rahu in the Lagna of any divisional chart, which means Rahu is in the first house of a particular divisional chart, like, you know, D9, D10, you know, whatever, any D. <laughs> Why is it difficult? Because whenever Rahu is in the Lagna of a divisional chart, you have a very abnormal conception at times. If Rahu is well-placed, you can be having eccentric views, but if Rahu is, by sign also it is valueless. So, for example, if Rahu is in the uh, first house of your D10 and you, your D10 Lagna is again, you know, water sign or fire sign and Rahu does terrible in water and fire signs, then you may, you, you may think, you know, it's okay, okay to cheat people, you know, like just grab money from wherever you get. Okay, so these kind of things can happen or you may be lazy, you may procrastinate, you may want quick shortcuts and all this, which is again cheating. Okay, so there, there you go. This is a very difficult placement. So if you have Rahu in the Lagna of a divisional chart and your D1 Bhava chart and that divisional chart is not good, then this is extremely challenging. But yes, overall your D1 Bhava chart and your that particular divisional chart where Rahu is in Lakna, if all these three are strong, then what it means is you are a bit eccentric towards that and you don't listen to anybody when it comes to that area of your life. But you can still do good, okay? But you need to be careful still nonetheless. But if all three are problematic, then you are screwed big time, all right? So therefore, in that case, you should do remedies for that particular divisional chart and you will be able to improve, all right? Thank you so much for your patience. Please let me know where is your Rahu and how was your Rahu Dasha and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and for personalized consultations, you can go to my website down in the description section. Jai Rahu Maharaj. <laughs>